All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can work with our animations, make adjustments to the curves and motion paths directly in our perspective view. So this is going to mean we can adjust handles, we can adjust the position of those keyframes, all without going into our timeline and adjusting those properties for the different um, axes or dimensions individually. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can modify our animations, our keyframes, um, essentially our motion path in our perspective view. As this is a, a little bit more intuitive way of working with um, our motion path, because instead of having to focus on the X and Y to end up with the shape we want, um, we can do it directly in our perspective view. Uh, and so I do think it makes a little bit more sense visually and for certain shapes, certain motion paths, it does become a lot easier. Now I wanna point out there's a little bit of a disconnect here um, when it comes to selecting these keyframes. We'll go over all this, but if I think I want to work with my keyframe on frame 60, you can see even if I select those keyframes, it really isn't updating here. So we'll go through all of that. And what we're gonna do is switch to this file and start where I essentially just have a circle. Um, this is gonna be the shape I want my motion path to have. And really there's no reason why I couldn't necessarily use something like a line to spline if I just wanted this to have a circular motion path. But if I wanted it to continue and do other things, that's where keyframes might be helpful. Uh, and there's no sense in trying to kind of just do it myself, I can use this shape as reference. And I do this a lot, whether it's for animation or modeling, if there's a shape I'm trying to recreate, um, and it's a simple shape that I already have available to me, I'm gonna use it as reference in order to get um, what I'm looking for. So I'll just create a cube, and I'll switch it to lines mode here while I create this animation. Um, and I'm not gonna be the most precise here, but essentially what I'm gonna do is just like how, if this was editable, I would have my points here, okay? That's essentially what I'm gonna be doing with my motion path like we saw in my finished version. Um, now there's actually a way to use a spline as a motion path. Maybe I'll, use, I'll do that in a future video. But all I'm gonna do is just keyframe this like I would any other object, you know, and once again, I'm not worrying about doing this as precisely as I could if I really wanted this to match that circle. Um, I think for just demonstrating this, this should work out just fine. But we'll do these three, actually four keyframes before moving on. So there we have it, right? All done, except it isn't. Uh, and I do wanna point out that it is possible to do all this in your timeline, but because you have multiple axes you're working with to define this motion path, mainly the X and the Y, it can be a little bit confusing in terms of, you know, how you would need to adjust this to match the shape, to get a round circular motion path like this. And that's where doing this in our perspective view can be very helpful. So let's start with this keyframe here. And at this point, um, well, I don't have to hide the circle quite yet, but you can see you can just click and drag and move the keyframe. So that's one way you can adjust this. And I do wanna point out that um, I am in a front view because much like working with splines, uh, you do wanna try and make sure you're in an orthographic view so that you end up with a locked axis. You can see the Z is kind of locked here um, already um, since that view you know, wasn't using it. But even if I was doing this in my perspective view, uh, if I, especially when I start working with the handles here, um, I would want to take a advantage of my axis locks um, if I'm using my perspective view and not say something like uh, a front view here. So yeah, you can just click and uh, drag these to change the motion path itself, but that won't get you to your handles. When you click and move a keyframe, all right, it will also pull up the key properties. And this can be a little bit confusing. So there are times where I will click and drag it and then undo it so it goes exactly back to where it was in order for me to be able to still access these. Because if you just click on one, you can see it really doesn't work. So my preferred method of kind of selecting that keyframe and also pulling up the key properties is to move it around and then undo it. There probably is another way. If somebody knows what it is, please leave me a comment down below. But essentially what we want to do is come here to our tangent preset. Now you may need to twirl that down in order to um, get access to these options, but what we want to do is uncheck auto tangents. And since I had this keyframe selected, there you go. There are our handles. We can now work with them just like uh, we could in our timeline. But now 
it's very much like a spline. It, we have one path here for both the Y and the X instead of the multiple um, curves like we have in our timeline. So you can see I can work with it here. I do wanna point out uh, some of these other options because essentially if you turn on any of these other options, like if you go, oh, I wanna lock tangent angles, the handles are going to disappear. If you click on lock tangent lengths, lengths they're going to disappear. The only one that won't do it is break tangents, which you can still do if you hold shift, okay? So you can see I am able to break handles in my perspective view um, that way. So at this point, that's what I would do is come through here and keep working on these. Once again, click to move it, undo, come here, check uncheck auto tangents. Now, this is something you've run into at the very beginning and, and keyframes where those handles don't automatically appear. What you have to do is on um, whatever motion path or axis you've worked with is adjust those handles um, a little bit. And I did the wrong keyframe here, so I'll come over here and do this one. You can see the second I start moving this, it removes overshooting and that gets it to move forward. And so I'll have to double check if actually that removing overshoot will get that handle to appear because it didn't work for me previously, but I suspect it might. So if I click remove overshooting, yeah, that didn't quite, okay, so that does work, awesome. So you don't have to move it in your um, uh, timeline here, though that does work. So if for whatever reason you're not seeing it, then yeah, you can absolutely do this. And once again, kind of coming through here, darn it, forgot to move it and undo you can see you're able to get something really, really close to being a perfect circle, okay? And really that's all there is to it. Now you do uh, run into some issues if your keyframes overlap, like if I did want this to do a complete circle, um, I have found it helpful to do kind of the keyframe first um, before doing the next one. So for instance, you know, I've already adjusted the handles at the very beginning here. So if I come here to frame 80, move this to there, do this, right? The problem comes from the fact that now I have two keyframes very close together and it can be hard to select one versus the other. Thankfully, because I didn't position these perfectly, um, I'm able to zoom in and see this. I can make sure I uncheck auto tangents and remove overshooting. And yeah, like I mentioned, it doesn't always, um, show you the handle. So I can come in here, adjust that handle. There we go. And quite easily, much easier than I've done in the past, you're able to get a complete circle movement here. And once again, if this is all we wanted, well, there's better options to do this. Like I said, using the align to spline, but in just a few minutes, I've able to been able to make this circular motion. And if I extend my timeline a little bit, well, maybe not quite that far, but I could then continue this, say, down here um, and not have to kind of worry about the aligned spline and continue, continuing it. So it's a very, very powerful technique, something I do recommend um, experimenting with, getting used to, because as you've seen, there are a few things you have to watch out for. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if we just look at our um, curves here in our timeline, you know, it is possible to do it. You just have to, you know, be able to recognize the shapes and when you need to work with which axis. And that just comes with practice in time. But that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you're still watching and found this video helpful, please do me a favor, like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care.